الحمد لله رب العالمين الملك الحق المبين أحمده على فضله وأشكره على وأشكره على أيديه وأشهد أنه الله لا إله إلا هو وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه من الله اليقين فاللهم اجزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته ألا وإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم آمين اللهم آمين اللهم آمين all praise and thanks are due to God, most merciful, most compassionate. And peace be upon his messenger and his family and his companions and his followers. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering a gathering of mercy, a gathering of forgiveness. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever we are, those who are in, in the masjid and those who are outside of the masjid and those who are in their homes and, and this raging epidemic. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to elevate them, to purify them, to protect them. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all that, that which we wish and more than that we that wish that than that we wish which we wish. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take away all of this, this this hardship and this pandemic away from us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us its ajr, to grant us its reward and grant us the, the patience to go with it and the gratefulness for what Allah Ta'ala had, had, had decreed upon us, but at the same time we plead with him to elevate it, to elevate it, take it away. Because we ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala to take all the hardship away from the lives of uh, our brothers and our sisters, whatever they are. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bring us back to the masjid, bring us all together again, one close to another one in lines, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying to him and pleading with him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unify our hearts even though our bodies are separated. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. My dear brothers and my sisters, everybody is talking about the resolutions of the, the new year. And this is the time where people uh, you know, are jubilous and are hopeful that the next year, that the, the next year is going to be better than the, next year, than the previous year. A previous year that a lot of people wants to forget. They wants to forget, and they wants to they wants to rebuke, and 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 they 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 denounce, and they and they hate, and they uh, uh, and they insult, and so on and so forth. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Yusubuni ibn Adama." Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. A human being insults me. And a human being says, Oh Allah, how do we insult you and the other Lord of the universe? He said, he's, he's, He insults time. And, he's, uh, and he or she are extremely disgusted with time. And they're extremely denigrating and putting down time. And I am time. Allah said, I'm the, I'm the, I am the everlasting. So I am the one who makes that time. So when people complain about this and complain about that regarding their times, or this year is bad and that year is bad, what are you basically complaining? What are we basically complaining about? You're complaining about the decrees of Allah and the wisdom of Allah within that year. Is all of what happened in this 2020, 2020 is it outside of the realm or the dominion of the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Absolutely not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not know that there is no leaf that fall or an atom or a, a, a seed of a small seed that is that is uh, that is fallen that is lost in the in the in the sea or in the earth except that he knows what it is he knows where that leaf falls and it doesn't fall except with his decree so there is nothing that happened in this universe except that it is with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we thank him for his decree. No matter how hard it is, in every decree of Allah, there is kindness. And we have to look for it when we open our hearts. Every calamity wants to tell us something about ourselves and about our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about where we want to be with him. 
every calamity is like a very beautiful, is like the is like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preventing us from that which is hurt, hurting us, or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pushing us towards Him. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pull us towards Him with the chains of calamities and hardship. Allahumma and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whenever He wants us to pull us towards Him, that He pulls us with the robes of kindness and mercy and love. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. A year that passed with all of what it was, and a year that is coming, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us perspective in it, to grant us resolution in it, to grant us determination to do that which we were not able to do last year. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it the way to make it better in a, better for us, not just in matter of the pandemic, it's in matter of our relationship with him, in matter of our relationship with the Prophet Every year passes, we're closer to our demise, we're closer to our graves. And we plea with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that which makes us that which makes us closer to him, which will really takes away all the all the obstacles that stop us from being the servants he wants us to be. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. The year that is coming that reminds us of our duty in this earth. And our duty in this earth. Our, two, our duties in, in this earth are two folds. The one, the first one, is to, the first one is the goal that is salvation from the hellfire. That is the goal of this life. The goal of this life is that we live in it and we don't lose sight of the hereafter. Because the moment we lose the, 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 we lose the sight of the hereafter, we become prey, we become prey of this world. And when we are praise of this world, it destroys us inward and outward. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, this is the first goal. The first goal of this while we are in this life is I make sure that I end up saying la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, the moment, the, the, the few seconds before I pass. And it doesn't happen except if we live upon it. We live upon la ilaha, la ilaha illallah in every part of our lives, in every part of our life, that la ilaha illallah has a lot of manifestations. It's just not words that we utter, it has a lot of manifestations in our lives, in the way we deal with people, in the way we, we manage our, our, our homes, in the way we manage our, our businesses, manage we deal with the world, inward and outer world. That's the mean, every part of our life is organized with the meanings and extensions of la ilaha illallah. So we, do we say la ilaha illallah when we deal with people, when we, when we deal in business way, when we deal with people who are transgressing against us, or deep people, people who are backbiting us and people who are, you know, uh, uh, who are against us? Do we deal with la ilaha illallah? Do we, do we say la ilaha illallah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to say, to say it when we, when we are at a time of anger, at a time of, uh, at a time of, of, uh, of difficulty and hardship and so on? Do we represent the la ilaha illallah in those moments, the moment of difficulty? So that's the first thing. The extension of la ilaha illallah in our lives get us to what? Get us to have salvation in the hereafter. Salvation from the hillfire in the hereafter. And the Prophet and Allah said in the Quran, And those who are moved away one inch away from hillfire and got into paradise, indeed those are the winners and the victorious. And everybody wants to be victorious in this world. Everybody wants to have more, more, more uh, attain the, the goals that are the highest goals in this world. But the ultimate goal is this. If we fail in this goal, we fail. Whatever goals you got in this world, whether it's money or wealth or whatever, or whatever you got degrees, whatever you got power, whatever it is that you got in this world, if it doesn't lead to this salvation of the hereafter, all the goals of the dunya becomes punishment in the hereafter. So that's whatever, whatever we, whatever goals we, whatever goals we attach to 2021 to achieve, whether it's regarding our health, whether it's regarding our relationships, whether it's regarding our uh, uh, academic achievements or our work achievements, or whatever it is that we want to do in 20, 2020, if we don't tie it up, we don't tie it up to the ultimate goal, then it's in vain. So the akhirah centralize the akhirah and all the dunya will fix itself. All the dunya will surround around that pole of the akhirah and it will manage it to it. Just like Sidna Wa'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala and who said, فَمَنْ اِهْتَمَّ بِالْآخِرَةِ مَنْ اِهْتَمَّ بِالْآخِرَةِ انْتَظَمَتْ لَهُ جَمِيعَ دُنْيَا So he said, if you pay attention to your akhirah, 
it will organize to you all the areas of your life. And that's exactly, that's exactly the manifestation of La ilaha illallah in our life. The second goal, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, is the goal that is communal, the communal goal. It's the, the Prophet ﷺ did not work so hard and the Quran was not sent just only for people to save themselves individually from, from hellfire. Otherwise, he would have made a, a convent somewhere in the desert and would have gathered people in there and just told them to focus on their akhirah and that's it. But the Prophet ﷺ, uh, worked hard to change people, to change the system, to change the way, to change the community that produced injustice, that produced racism, that produced sexism, that produced all the isms that, that dehumanized the human being and uh, all the isms that destroy the dignity of the human being, that preys on the, on the human being and suck its blood. And you can look around and see in our world, that's what's going on. Just in the, in the vaccine of the pandemic, you would you realize that some people are going to get it first and some people are going to get last. So some lives are more important than other lives. Some lives are more crucial than other lives. The first world is going to get it first after probably a year or two. The second, the, the, the third world is going to get it last. Those are, you could see the, the, you could see the distribution of wealth, the distribution of resources, the dis distribution of solutions to, to problems that are human are being hoarded by some and, and, uh, uh, kept away from others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant the Muslims the power to unite and to, to become a force of good and force of morality that elevates the human being no matter what they are. That elevates the human being and give priority to those who are destitute and those who are poor and those who are who don't have. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that. Allahumma and just like the Prophet The second goal, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, is to have the istikhlaf. The, the word in Arabic is istikhlaf, is good vice, is to be a good, good vice gerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth, in every matter. And when the Prophet sallallahu came in, he came in with that, and that's why he came in with that in mind, and he practiced it sallallahu alayhi wa and we ended up with what we call the prophetic community in Medina. And inshallah, in, in, uh, in a series of khutbahs, that I'm planning to do inshallah on this topic so it can be clear to people the importance of that. We will discuss the hadith of Sidna Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. I will start sharing the hadith today and speak about it in general and then in the next khutbahs inshallah, we will break it down to see what do we mean exactly with the prophetic community because a lot of people hear this, this, this word and it means, it means something that is so far away, so remote that they can't wrap their heads, heads around. And indeed it is so remote in it from our lives, but we bringing back those principles and reviving them and making them a core of our belief, making them core of our belief and making them manifestations of our Islam will revive the prophetic community. That's how the Prophet had done it. The hadith, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, and I'm just going to read the hadith and I will stop in here. The hadith is narrated by Ibn Sa'd. في الطبقات uh, Imam Bayhaqi, Imam Waqi' في أخبار القضاة in the in the news in in the in the in the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the in the Imam Tabarani in the تاريخ uh, Ibn Asakir في تاريخ دمشق البلافري في أنساب الأشراف and uh, and so many others had mentioned this hadith. The hadith is not very strong in Isnad, but its hadith is well known. The hadith is by Sidna, is narrated by a tabi'i, his name is Ata' is, is an Muharib ibn Dithar, uh, an Ata' ibn Sa'ib. When Sidna Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, عندما تولى Abu Bakr ibn Siddiq al-Khilafa ta'ala, walla Umara ibn al-Khattab al-Qada' wawalla Aba Ubaidata al-Mal wa qala a'inuni. When Sidna Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu became the caliph, the Prophet uh, became the caliph of the Prophet Sallallahu He looked around and he says, you guys have to help me. I can't do this by myself. So Sidna Abu Bakr said, Sidna Umar said to him, I will take care of the judgeship. I will be the person who rule between people when they come, right? And Sidna Abu Ubaid said, I will take care of the finances. I will be the person who takes care of the finances. 
And uh, the, in another in narration, Sidna Sidna Umar Sidna Abu Bakr radiAllahu taala anhu went to them and he said, "You guys have to help me, and you are going to take care." It, they, they did not volunteer, but Sidna Abu Bakr radiAllahu taala anhu assigned them. But nonetheless, Sidna Abu Bakr al Hadith is about Sidna Umar now. Sidna Umar remained for a couple of months with no not much to do. The problems of the Medina were not huge problems, and he would he would fix them, you know, quickly. And he had nobody comes to him for judgeship. There's no major fights. There's no major uh, transgressions, and people are just and and he just have nothing to do. Basically, he's a judge without he's he's a judge without without a portfolio. Basically, doesn't do much. The whole day passes and he doesn't do anything. So after a while, he came after a while in this case in this situation in here, he came to Sidna Abu Bakr radiAllahu taala anhu, and he said, "Release me from this job." So Sidna Abu Bakr told him, why am I releasing you from his job? Is it, is it difficult for you? Is it the weight of the judgeship is difficult for you that you, you feel that you're going to be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it in the hereafter? Or you're not good at it? I know you're good at it. He said, by Allah, Sidna Umar said, by Allah, none of those. It's not none of those. I wanted to help you. And I know that your weight, that your responsibility is bigger than mine. I'll help you. But at the same time, he says to him, uh, he said to him, by Allah, like a, a month passes and not two people come to, to, to request my request my my help. I don't judge between them. There is nothing, there is no fights between them, right? فقال, فقال Abu Bakr, is it because it's difficult that you, you, you ask for to, to be released? Say Sidna Umar said, No, Ya Amir al Mu'minin. I have nothing to do with these people. I'm not working with, for these people. There is nothing to do with these people. This is a job without, without much responsibility. He said, La haja li inda I, This job is meaningless with these people who are, who are good believers. This is the prophetic community, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. This is the prophetic community. La haja li inda Mu'minin. They are believers, good believers. The second is that عرف كل منه ما له من حق فلم يطلب أكثر منه وما عليه من واجب فلم يقصر في أدائه. Each one of them knew that which they owe and they paid it in full, and they knew their responsibilities, what what people owe to them, and they took only that which people owe to them, no more than that. Which means that these people they have self constraint. And they don't go and take the rights of people and delay people in their debts and, and, and find ways to, to grab a little bit of this and grab and hassle out, hassle people, out, hassle this one, out, hassle this one, out, hassle this one of 20 and out, hassle this one of, of 100. And, and so whatever their rights is, they take it and they don't take more. They don't need somebody to show them where they have to stop. And whatever their responsibilities are, they give them in full and a little more. Right? And each one of them love, they love for themselves what that which they love. Uh, they love for their brothers that which they love for themselves. They are intertwined. That's the core of every single thing. The love for each other. This is the areas. This is the area, Sidna Umar is mentioning the areas in here that may not be related to justice and to the government and to the ruling system, but it has such an effect on it. And that's why Imam Sahrawardi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, Sahrawardi, the faqih and the muhaddith said, If people deal with each other with ihsan, with benevolence and mercy and compassion and generosity and magnanimity, they would not need justice. And that's, that's what he's mentioning here, Sidna Umar anhu. He said, Each one of them loved for himself that which he loved for, for, for his brother, that which he or she loved for herself and for her sister. When one of them is absent, they look for him or for her. Somebody doesn't show up for, 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 for the prayer sometimes, they go and check on him. What's going on? How, how, are, things with, how are things with your brother? We haven't seen you or how are things with your sister? And so on. When a person is sick, they visit him, they visit her. 
وإذا افتقر أعانه when they get poor they help him and when they are in need they are an assistant of him or for her وإذا أصيب when they are in a calamity and hardship they are there to show support and to show uh, condolences and to show, to show help and, to, and, to, and they are there and دينهم النصيحة their main character the main character of the religion is nasiha is that they are there to give to give beautiful counsel to each other they care for each other they care for the akhirah of each other and their characteristic and their character and their a- a- attribute is to is that they enjoy that which is good collectively and then they ha- and then they stop that which is and halt and fight that which is wrong collectively and then he said at the end of this it's like why would people like this fight to need a judge why would these people fight why would these people fight Sidna Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is describing to us what is the prophetic community how did it function what are the core characteristics of this prophetic community my dear brothers and my dear sisters I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to grant us awakening to grant us awakening so we can tie up our personal salvation with our communal salvation so we can work out work, we can go and be the community the prophet allah subhanahu wa wants us to be brothers for the sake of allah take care for each other and love each other and visit each other and that is the core of benevolence that is the core that makes our light shine that is the core that makes our that makes our our goals connect inshallah when you build a community, your akhirah becomes, becomes covered. Build a beautiful prophetic community. The akhirah is centralized and your salvation become, becomes more likely become, you can, because you create an environment for it. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that 2021 will be a, will be a, will be a year in which we all come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In, in which a year we are more, we are strong with Him. We are strong by Allah, we are strong because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, strong because of his aid to us and because of his support to us and because of our abudiyya to him. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all resolution to change and transform to that which is better. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those in the right path that Allah ta'ala can strengthen them in the right path. Those that are, that are in need of light that Allah ta'ala grant them light with which they can see the future. Those who are in need and help in their health that Allah ta'ala be with them and give them speedy recovery. And those that are in need of uh, in any type of assistance that Allah Ta'ala be with them in Allah Malaikatahu Yusalluna ala nabiya yu alladhina aminu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin kama sallaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala ala Sayyidina Muhammadin kama barik ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim اللهم عن سادتنا أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن السيد الباقين والعشر الذين شهد الله صلى الله بجنة وأجمع على محبتهم كافة وأهل السنة اللهم اغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسرنا وما أعلنا وما أنت علوم به منا أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا ولم تغفر لنا وترحمنا أن نكون لنا من خاسرين والله وطلي وديون وي and we ask you and we entreat you to forgive us and to be with us and to not, to not make our share of you our tongues. That Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, fill our hearts with your love, fill our hearts with your iman, fill our hearts with closeness to you. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, make 2021, make 2021 a year of, of opening and unification of the Muslims. Ya Rahman Rahim. Make it a year in which we can wake up for our, to our akhirah and wake up to build a community that the Prophet ﷺ will be proud of. Ya Rahman Rahim. Ya Allah, unify our heart no matter how the distance is between us. Unify our hearts for your sake, Ya Rahman Rahim. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahim. Whoever is going through hardship, Ya Allah, be with them. Ya Allah, whoever needs guidance, Ya Allah, grant it to them. Ya Allah, whoever is going through any type of hardship, Ya Allah, appease their hearts, Ya Rahman Rahim. Ya Allah, whoever needs clarity, Ya Allah, grant them clarity, Ya Rahman Rahim. Ya Allah, be with us and don't leave us to ourselves. Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Rahman Rahim, Ya Rahman Rahim. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam salima. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنت إذا القرب وإنا حشفة أمنا عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروا يزيدكم واستغفروا يغفر لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته